Okay, I'd like to call a joint special school building committee to order. We're at National High School North Lecture Hall. It's Thursday, April 6th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Would the clerk please call the roll? Certainly. Alderman Dowden? Present. Alderwoman Wilshire? I'm here. Um, Alderman Clee is not here. Alderwoman Timmons? Here. Alderman Sullivan is not here. Ms. Raymond is not here. Ms. Lamphere? Here. Ms. Bishop is here. Ms. Giglio? Here. And Mr. Claffey? Here. We have a quorum. All right, we have a quorum. Sure. If the clerk would please read the prayer and Ms. Giglio, would you lead us in the pledge? My lovely voice. It's a smoky. Almighty God, we have the high honor and serious duty to manage the educational affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O oh God, with a spirit of unity and understanding which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all of our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. If there are no objections, I'll waive the reading of the minutes of the March 6, 2023 meeting and place them on file. Remarks by Chairman. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here this evening. Uh, I know this is a... a a makeup meeting and a uh, meeting to cover some of the awards for the Maine Dunstable Birch Hill project, among others. Uh, so, as we're going, we also have some items here on the vestibule project. So, we have a lot of things to keep track of these days. Okay, remarks by school administration. No. Sorry. At the that superintendent was, calling it? That was Trevor Regis, returning my call. <laughs> um, yes, just a reminder that our next meeting on the 20th is a week earlier than usual because of the April vacation break. So April 20. And to side note, we last Friday, we actually at Alderman Dowd flipped the switch on the solar. So we're now running on solar at Penetrack Middle School, which should reduce our energy consumption by a fair amount. One hefty switch. I have a picture of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anything else? All right. Items for discussion and approval. The first item on the agenda is the architect's report from Harriman. Good evening, everyone. Jamie Willett with Harriman. Uh, tonight I have an uh, update on the, kind of the uh, design portions of the construction work uh, and maybe a little bit of touching of what the actual construction work looks like. The uh, three or uh, four schools, I guess, right now that are primarily under construction, uh, you know, there's a little bit happening at Penichuk and Fairgrounds is complete, but we have uh, some reports to for McCarthy Middle School, Franklin School, uh, Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable, and we'll, we'll, we'll hit on that one with the project status uh, update, scope update, and then the uh, schedule and phasing. That's probably the, the that C section is the, the mass portion of what we'll talk about tonight. <clears throat> so in the McCarthy Middle School, um, you know, we're continuing to review submittals and RFIs, but those have dwindled quite a bit. Um, right now, at, at this point, um, you know, Harvey's moving right along quite quite uh, quickly on it and uh and um it's it's looking good out there that you know the the i saw some aerial photos uh, that were taken uh, from right from the school district here and and it uh and it, it was it was clo being closed up i was there last week and and uh, a lot a lot of work happening out there um so we continue to um you know have construction coordination refinement items that we review 
Um, a more recent request was to uh, provide a spot for a trash compactor. Uh, Elm Street School currently has one, and I think there's a uh, desire to reuse that at the McCarthy Middle School, so we were able to uh, prepare some documents for Harvey to, to start looking at that would adjust a little bit of the site to make that happen. Um, we, were issue, we were able to issue some documents for uh, some additional athletic equipment coordination items. So we had m met with um, the athletic director, uh, Jingres, and, and coordinated some of the needs for the uh, equipment that is needed out there and bleachers and things like that. And uh, so we're making refinements on that as we move our way through, through and, and Harvey has that in hand now as well. Um, we are continuing to make progress on the playground for the uh, lower level area, the space outside. Um, we've been coordinating with a uh, playground, um, I guess they're like a distributor installer, um, been coordinating with them and the interim special ed director, Alexander, on what, those, what that equipment will look like. I've been talking about that for a little while, but it just continues to make some evolution. There's been some... Um, some difference, you know, there's transitions from people and things like that have happened. So that continues to make progress. We're hoping to be able to wrap that one up f fairly soon. Um, there was a request as we were doing, uh, some of these I've already mentioned in, in past meetings, so I'm just kind of giving an update on them, but there was a request that when we were walking through some of our furniture inventory uh, at the Elm Street Middle School to reuse the pottery wheels uh, for the art rooms and um, that was not something we were aware of at, at th through design, so we had to accommodate for that. We were able to provide a low wall in one of the art rooms um, with um, outlets along that wall, uh, and, and, and actually it fits quite nicely in the space and actually creates a nice divider for that pottery wheel area. So there's, I know that Harvey is, is looking at getting the conduits for the slab so that this little low wall can support these pottery wheels. So we were able to issue that to Harvey to look at. Um, also walking through and meeting with uh, the interim special ed director, Alexander, um, there was a request for a, um, an ADL bathroom in one of the intensive needs areas of the school um, and, and also a hoist. Um, they just recently installed one at the South High School, and so he was able to bring me over to explore what that looked like um, and how they use it. Um, and then we looked for the right spot in, in this school um, to, to host that. And so I know Harvey's working on that as well. And then we re reviewed the exterior mock-up panel, which I'll share an image of that tonight as well. So that upper left picture, the upper left two pictures, or the left pictures, um, are the mock-up panel. So Harvey, per, per our documents, Harvey builds a, a panel of, of the exterior wall construction and window construction um, to our documents so that we, we can review the conditions of, of what, it will be built, what it will be built on the building before they build it on the building and have to go backwards um, if for something that might need to be modified. Um, and so you can see the brick on the upper left. Um, that's what the build, brick on the building will look like once it starts to get installed. You can see the window on the left. Um, the, the white color is just simply the plastic over the window. And then on the bottom right, or the middle picture the, is the tectum, uh, excuse me, the um, concrete paneling, cementitious paneling, which you have at Penichuk as well, if you want a, a better idea of where that, what that looks like. Um, and, and so we were able to review that gave responses and, and comments to Harvey and they were able to, to uh, adjust accordingly for any few things that, that we saw as we were going through. On the right side is some of that uh, athletic uh, equipment that I mentioned earlier. So you can see there's some bleachers that are being placed, that will be placed out there. Um, you know, discus cage detailing was provided so they know where to, where to put that and what it, what it looks like. Um, so that's, that's beginning to move forward as well. On the left side of the, of the screen there is the ADL bathroom design. Um, so originally, in that very upper left corner, we had a, you can see what it looked like before we provided the space for the uh, bathroom. So there was a small bathroom, a shower bathroom, uh, shower and toilet room um, on the bottom right of that 
upper left image. Um, and that just wasn't enough space for what they need for this particular population of student. Um, in, in good fortune, we had a collaboration room just above it. And in this particular population, that, collabor that particular collaboration room isn't quite necessary. There's other ones in that space. Um, so we were able to, to borrow from that space and take, take over, basically removing a portion of the wall and opening up this bathroom so that they could install a hoist with a cot, which you could see the little red dash line, that's where the hoist would travel. And that bottom left image is the hoist that was, that was actually installed at uh, the South High School. And so that's what we're looking to utilize at this school as well. The right side is kind of identifying what I mentioned earlier about the pottery wheel. So the, the bottom right image is the pottery wheels from Elm Street. Um, and then the upper image on the right is the little wall. You can kind of see it's bubbled in red with dimensions around it too. There's a little short wall, uh, you know, a couple feet high, two and a half feet high actually, to line with a casework across from it. So the teacher can still see over, but the pottery wheels can be up against that area. So That's what I have right now on McCarthy. They moved to Franklin Street School. So again, submittals and RFIs continue to make progress over there. Um, for design updates, uh, I think you, you're all from, pretty familiar with the fact that we were designing a kitchen space, um, and those drawings have been issued to Harvey. Uh, you can see what that kitchen space looks like in plan. You can see all the pieces of equipment and such, and such in there. Um, and that's what was issued, with, as well as all the mechanical electrical pieces for that, for that space. Uh, right now, it's into review through the health department. Um, we've gotten a few questions from the health department and responded to those. We're just waiting for more information back from them. Um, I will I'm plan to check in with them here in the next uh, week or so. And then the elevator scope, um, also a request that we were given for to des some design elements for that elevator, you know, the modernization of it, uh, was also issued to Harvey um, for their pricing and, and, and to move forward with once, once accepted. And then we move on to Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable Elementary Schools. So at the last um, meeting, we were still um, working on finalizing pricing for that, or Harvey was still working on pricing our documents. Um, it, there has been some, um, actually quite a bit of happenings ha over there. So I'll go through this and then I'll, I'll refine my discussions as I get through. So the final design, design refinements of the scope and budget limitations. So there were some limitations that were provided uh, based on where the budget finally came in. We were able to identify some very easy uh, items to refine, or to reduce, um, or actually what we're, the plan is to pull some of these elements out to um, defer. Um, so if there's contingency money, they will, will defer that for later on down the, the scope. It's easy things to add in later uh, if needed or if desired. I know that I've had a discussion with one of the principals on a couple of the elements and they were, they were like, oh, you know, it's not even necessary. So that was, you know, good news. Um, but, but that continues to move forward. There was some simple things as just, just finalizing the soft costs of the project um, so that you know, there were things that we decided, the things, things that were noted that weren't really necessary, uh, some testing or whatnot, and that was easy to, to shift over in the right budget. Um, so anyways, that, it looks like it's made, we made it to the right spot. Um, Harvey will be presenting their, their GMP tonight, um, and they can talk a little bit on that once, it, once it's their chance to, to do so. Um, we have submitted for permitting to the state fire marshal and also the city building department. Um, I know the state fire marshal has given me a response that they have accepted the application. It's kind of like when you submit to the IRS, they just accept that they received your portion, but there's been no, you know, no approval, so to speak. So, um, and then we actually have had follow-up meetings prior to, to finalizing the documents. We've had uh, review meetings with the school district and the school principals to talk about phasing, um, and, and the project scopes. A, a lot of that stuff is what I'm gonna be sharing in these future slides to show you what we presented to them and what they were, so they're, you know, they were familiar with it. You're gonna be familiar with it and everybody kind of knows where we're going on this one, so. So project scope, schedule, construction phasing, and logistics. And we, we maintained you know, the primary goals of the project was new HVAC and new classrooms and that, that was a successful goal in, in the, uh, the budgets. 
So some of these images you've, you've seen, um, and in fact, probably none of them really have changed, but so, you know, maybe, maybe some, but we'll, we'll touch on those if we see them. So right now, you, the new entrance of vestibule is still in the scope. The teacher's lounge and cafeteria space is still in the scope. Se uh, separated classrooms, one of the primary goals is still in the scope. Mechanical, still in the scope. And again, another goal, primary goal. New casework, new window replacement, interior finishes, ADA accessible toilet spaces, all of that was in there from the get-go and still maintain, is maintained in there. And then this, so that was the lower level and the main floor, and then this is the upper level, same, same elements of scope. So what does that look like? The main entrance, here's Birch Hill. Um, that upper left image is the, you know, the darker entrance with the big canopy that overhangs. Um, now the new entrance will, would, will, well, you know, assuming the GMP is approved, the scope would end up being this, this canopy here down the bottom right. This is a rendered image of, of that actual new, of the new entrance. Jamie, just so this, the security vestibule is already in place at uh, both these schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're, we're utilizing that existing set of doors that was just done recently in the back, um, just refurbishing the inside here outside and then the inside the vestibule. So here's what that looks like. Upper left image is inside the, vest, the security vestibule and then the bottom left and the right images are what the new space will look like. Mm -hmm. So the doors that are blue in the back right now will just be repainted. It'll be the same doors. There's no, no changes there. Um, the the, on that right image, there's a little window to the left in the back. That's still the security window that's always been there or was added um, in the secure, secure vestibule project that was done. Um, new bulletin boards. There's a lot of clutter that was in that existing vestibule. There was tables, there was trophy cases, mm -hmm. um, chairs. And so we tried, to, we tried to build some of that stuff in. So on like, as an example, on the, um, bottom, on the, on the right image, uh, yeah, right. Okay, I start there, Alderman Dad. On that, you can see there's there's built-in desk and bench, or like a table and bench space that will allow for them to put some stuff, you know, or, or work out. What they do is they have certain people go out there to work or wait for the wait for their students to come out uh, when they're leaving. And so there's a space there for that. <clears throat> Just to the left of that bench, there's a cubby area. So if a teacher brings in, I mean, excuse me, if a parent brings in some shoes, and you know, instead of ga giving them access into the building. You can say, okay, leave, you know, leave the shoes here and, and, and we'll, we'll get somebody to come grab them in a moment to give them to so-and-so. Um, on the right side of that same image is, same image is the fire alarm panel and the graphic map. So that's something that's required uh, in general and, and is there now. Um, on that right image, um, bulletin board and a little more um, bench area as well as in the back of that, that right near the back doors there is a uh, display case uh, to replace some of the loose display cases around that space now. Looking at Maine Dunstable, again, you know, similar uh, design, different color, a little different uh, angular shape. I think we talked about that before where Maine Dunstable, you're coming um, kind of straight into the drive or down into it a little bit, and so it kind of opened it up, whereas Birch Hill, you're driving up from underneath a little bit to the entrance, so it kind of gives that uh, similar feel as you're driving in. And then inside the vestibule, same idea, uh, same, same uh, host of elements in there. As you come through the security vestibule, you'll have uh, really the big replacement here that, you'll, that you would notice is the flooring in that entry area be replaced, um, ceilings, lights, and that's, that's a new paint. And then uh, as you go toward the cafeteria, so turn away from admin on both schools, there's different directions in each of the schools because the schools are flipped, but um, there was new uh, ADA toilet rooms added, um, actually one added and two replaced, so they're actually ADA compliant now. Um, teacher's Lounge got a little refurbished because of that work as well as uh, some of like the storage area just happened to be adjusted because we needed some space for one of the toilet rooms. And then the cafeteria will get, so the upper left image is the existing cafeteria. It's got beams that kind of float out there and um, some strip lights. And, um, and so the bottom right image is the new space. Uh, you can see there's some soffits on each end that will be highlighted in the paint. 
Those also are hiding new duct work that'll be going into the space, um, new ceilings, new lights, and like I said, the flooring, paint. <clears throat> And main Dunstable, same idea. Again, flip, a little bit different color. I wanted to show kind of a typical classroom layout. Uh, I think I've done a couple, so like kindergarten is one space. Um, the, the difference with kindergarten spaces is, is they have restrooms and a sink. Um, mm -hmm. And in addition, the K through two grades will have cut the existing cubbies reused um, in, in the... Um, in the, in the classroom space itself. You got some new bookcases and some storage units, uh, new teaching wall, demising walls are new for most of these spaces. Um, a shared door between classrooms where applicable or where, where we can get them in. Um, yeah, be new finishes and, and whatnot in there as well. And then the grades above kindergarten, same thing, just they don't have the restroom and the sinks in them but same, same host of other elements. And then this is an upper level area and, and the difference between the second floor here, which is on the first floor and the upper level classrooms are that the, the cubbies slash lockers are be in the corridor as opposed to um, in the classroom. I, I should note that one of those adjustments that I talked about earlier were, was that the cubbies in the, in the original plan um, were to be reused and repainted in the uh, lower level floors and new in the upper level uh, with doors. Um, and one of, the, one of the easy refinements was to reuse all lockers and, instead of buying all new. Um, and and there's, there's plenty of count there. Actually, uh, Harriman went out there last week just to confirm counts and, and coordinate with the principals on there's two different types there and make sure that we had enough of the one type that they preferred. That has been done. Um, and the painting of them is being deferred to later if we have enough contingency money to do it. Um, if not, I mean, lockers can be replaced. Uh, the th nice thing about lockers is they can be replaced easy. They can always be done later if you wanted to. The painting of them can be done later if we wanted to. So that, that's why it was a, a nice thing to hold off on because there is cubbies there. They're in decent shape. Um, some of them might need some minor repairs, but hopefully what we haven't, we, I think we have enough to remove the ones that are maybe a little more beat up, uh, but most of them are in really, really decent shape. So it, it's not a major concern. They're using them now and, and, they, and they, uh, they work well, so. I did want to give kind of an overall s intended schedule. Um, I know Harvey continues to refine this as, as things develop, but I, I think this is pretty far along. Um, so you can see where we started in 2022 with the approval for design services in July. We hit schematic design and design development in 2022, and then our construction documents came out in February of 23. Um, the intended construction start is uh, May, June. It's noting June because that's when the construction of the building will start, but I know, well, I, I say no. I believe that Harvey... Uh, intends to maybe start some site work with approval tonight on the GMP to maybe start getting ready for some of that work uh, as, as early as May, um, not necessarily impacting the student body in the school, but just some of the site work and mobilization. And then I've color coded the phases on this particular chart. You'd have to flip back and forth to really see how it worked, but I just want to make sure that I noted it, that those colors up there kind of reflect, or they do reflect what's included in the upcoming phases that I show. But you can see the overall intended project uh, is is approximately going to you know the beginning of uh, excuse me the beginning of the school year of 2025. So these are the phases I was talking about. Um, this has been uh, Ken. Are you going to speak to this a little bit or no? You can now if you'd like. <clears throat> so basically, um, how we broke the construction projects up for these schools. We kind of use the design documents to strategically take as much space as we can without impacting the use of the school. So we've, we've met a few times with uh, the superintendent, the assistant superintendent, and both principals of the schools, and we'll continue to do that periodically as we move through the construction process. Um, but, you know, just to walk them through what to expect at the beginning and end of each phase, work with Mr. Smith's uh, team to 
make sure that the teachers can move in and out in a timely fashion to allow us to get the work completed. So uh, a lot of thought went into the schedule development and phasing, you know, working in tandem with, with the administration and the staff of the school. So it's something that will continue to evolve as we, as we all know throughout uh, the recent projects at Fairgrounds and Penichuk, but uh, I think we've got a good plan and a good team in place to be successful at both schools. So just for the record, when you speak, and if you haven't been identified, give your name and that you represent so the transcriptionists can know who's speaking. Sure. So Ken Lamaria, Harvey Construction. Thank you. Yes. Um, thank you, um, Chairman. Um, I have a question regarding the, um, the main vestibule and the lobby. Um, I have a kiddo over there, and I went to pick him up. I pick him up all the kids all the time. But this particular day, I picked one of my kiddos up from Birch Hill. And they, the kids was coming in from the playground. And the vestibul, vestibul door was open between the lobby and the, um, the entrance going into the school. And I was in the lobby. That door was open for a long time, so anybody can follow those kids in. And my question, I felt pretty uneasy. Um, my question is, if we can kind of put a door between the playground and the building some kind of way, well, that door is not open like that. Birch Hill, I that was Birch Hill. No, the, the, they opened the whole. No, but I mean, I think there is a door on the side of the building. Where the kids I am can. using my mic. <laughs> so we, we can, we can look at that. I mean, there are existing doors. Um, I think we, you know, certainly Mr. Smith, we can review with the safety and security director. Maybe there's a protocol thing that uh, might have might have not been followed, followed through potentially that day. I, I'm not sure, but uh, I know there are other doors other than the main entrance that uh, could have card badges to allow teachers to swipe in and swipe out. Uh -huh. um, so... So as the children was going through the door, um, one of the kids said to me, hi, and I said, hi back, and she said, oh, we don't talk to strangers. So that was a good thing. But the point is, I, I could have easily just grabbed one of the kids and ran out. Uh, I, of course, I had my own kid waiting for me, but um, I felt very uneasy, and those kids, I believe, was not secure. Yeah, that, and, and that's more of an issue for the Board of Ed and the school district. Uh make sure that the kids have a safe route in from the playground. Okay. I think they usually use the main doors, but. Uh... Yeah, I guess I couldn't speak to, to their protocols that day or what was going on, so. Hmm? There, are, there are card swipe doors uh, throughout the building, and I, I know we're adding some in some locations as well, so card readers and, and con door contacts to monitor doors. Okay. Oops. Um, so th there, there is a need due to the construction to add uh, temporary portables uh, at both of the schools. Uh, I know we've talked about that a little bit in the past. So both of the schools will have four classrooms, which is a total of two portable buildings brought over uh, from Elm Street School to here temporarily uh, to house some, some, uh, some of the students during construction so that the phased construction can occur um, without impacting the amount of classrooms needed. Um, and so there is work involved, and, and what this big image basically represents is you can see the A on the drawing is identified where the main entrance is. At, uh, Bur this is Birch Hill, excuse me. Uh, and C is where those modulars are. Uh, we've created paths to get there, and, and these, these portables, we've fitted up with all the safety and security measures that are required. And then at Main Dunstable, it's a similar idea. Uh, you can see again where A is to the main entrance and C is, is where the portables will, will end up in the end. Also, uh, in addition to those portable classrooms, there will be fitting up um, the existing gymnasium temporarily for some uh, classroom spaces, so five classroom spaces in each of the gyms to house, uh, again, some temporary classrooms. Uh, this was a this was something that was uh, done on other schools during construction. As an example, I know it was done at Sunset Heights and Broad Street schools. It seemed to work quite successfully. Um, so um, that, uh, that's the plan here as well. 
And this, this represents, again, the colors that are in the, the left uh, construction phasing as well as the calendar schedule I had shared earlier. Kind of shows you where each of the spaces will be worked on um, as, as the project moves on. The second, the upper and lower level. And then there was some site logistics that, um, that uh, Harvey had worked through. Um, coordinated that with the school administration as well as the principals of each school um, to, to identify where their job trailers would be to, to least impact any of the, the school operations um, as, they, as they were doing construction. So this one here again is Birch Hill and then Main Dunstable. That's it. Hi, I just have a question. The media centers are mentioned in both of these as being part of the final part of the, the construction. Um, are they staying where they are in these two schools? Yeah, the media center is, is media centers are staying where they are. The work that's uh, involved in them is replacing uh, flooring, carpeting in there, uh, painting, new ceilings, uh, and then mechanical systems, lighting. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. I was just wondering um, how, what is the, um, the, the time that the temporary classrooms will be there? Like how, how long will the kids I be using them the, for? Through the duration of construction. Um, so when will they begin using them? Um, next fall. Next fall. Okay, thank yep. you. Yeah, they'll start using them in September. They'll be there until the project's done. And then what happens to them after that? No one knows. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, Ken, you will, at some point, will EEI to either do it after you or? Sure, sure. Yeah, I can go yeah. if you want. You want to go now? Just give an update on your end of the Franklin Street, Main Dunstable, Birch Hill? And just to identify yourself and the company. Hello, Matt Smith, EEI. Um, I guess I'll get into a little bit of Franklin Street because there's really not much there. We've uh, we've uh, finished up all the punch list, and now we're just waiting for springtime to get the windows in. So we're kind of in a holding pattern. And um, so I'll have more to update as, the, uh, as we get closer to that. But um, as far as Birch Hill and Main Dunstable, our design team for the MEP, which is Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing, has been uh, coordinating with Harriman. And we have been working with Harvey to help with the scheduling and uh, our plans have been submitted off to uh, the city for approval. And it looks like we, we have uh, some revisions uh, that the school had asked us to make, uh, some, some missing information. So we should have the, uh, the finalized set uh, delivered again next week for, um, for our plans for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. And, uh, at this point, we've started getting the ordering for mechanical equipment and things with long lead times, boiler equipment, things of that nature. And um, we're starting to get all our finalized numbers put together and getting our team put together and, and, and getting the subcontracts out. Um, so that's about it on our end. We're just kind of um, steadily waiting for for springtime and the approval tonight, and and uh, we'll go from there. If you hadn't heard, I had a meeting yesterday with Senator Rosenwald and also the staffs of Senator Hassan and Senator Shaheen. Yes, my understanding is that there is a way to get the extension for the ESSER three money. Yes. Uh, that you and Mr. Smith have had a meeting, uh, so I, I was. I'm in the loop, but I wasn't at the meeting, so didn't know if you guys wanted to 
elaborate on that or not? Just that uh, there was documentation on ESSER funds that doesn't seem to have made it from Washington through the state to us, which we now have. And basically, uh, bottom line was uh, as long as we're committed ESSER funds by September of 24, that meets one check mark. And then we just have to, and we can submit the uh, requisitions for payment up until September of 28, we're not going to go that long. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, we just have to ask. Uh, we're going to ask through the state, but uh, both senators' offices are involved, so they'll be tracking it all the way through. Which is great news. Okay. Any questions for EEI? Well, no? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ken Lemarier, Harvey Construction. Good evening, everybody. So I, ha I did have a presentation, but as Alderman Dowd noted earlier, this is a makeup meeting, so m now my photos are old. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll give you nice new photos in two weeks when we're back here um, at the, the meeting on April 20th. But I'll just give a quick update on what's going on on site. Uh, Jamie just kind of walked us through what is taking place behind the scenes at Birch Hill and Main Dunstable. He did mention the construction start date, so we are going to start um, having a presence there over April vacation, getting our uh, site fencing all set up. So we've been working with the principal and the staff there to make sure that they're aware of what's going to be going on. So we're going to be kind of getting the, the area ready for the portable trailers when school ends so we can bring them over uh, at the end of June when um, Elm Street um, no longer needs them. So that's kind of where we, st we stand at Main D and Birch Hill. I'll have more information at the next meeting for, you know, kind of getting things ready for construction start. Uh, over at Panachuk right now, we're, 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 we are substantially complete for the base scope of the project. I know uh, during last uh, month's meeting, we had some additional work approved to kind of spruce up some landscaping and clean up kind of the exterior of the school. So. Uh, we'll be there over April break to address some of those items and any warranty items for some of the plantings that might not have made it through the winter. So um, that's part of the construction warranty process. It's typically one year um, that we kind of maintain and manage uh, anything that was installed as part of the project. Um, moving over to McCarthy, I was out there today and it's, it's amazing how much has gotten done since the last time I was there a week ago. Essentially, on the first floor of uh, Building C, we've got lockers and finishes and flooring all going in now. And then on the other side of the building in Area A, it's you know we're still placing concrete. So it would be a good, I think, in the next month or so, it'd be a good time to maybe do a tour and kind of get everybody a, a good feel for where things stand. Because you can see, excuse me, you can see kind of the raw construction portion of the project and then what the finished product is going to look like. So starting to take shape um, over there at McCarthy. Yeah, I, I was there today as well, and I noticed the athletic fields coming right along. The track is being built, foundations put in place so they can put down the asphalt and then the cover. Uh, good point. So the, um, the goal is to start planting the, the grass in the, at the end of May. So we'll basically get two full grow seasons and be lush for when it's being used when the school is turned over in 2024. So that's the goal right now. We're working with um, Sean's crew and the um, irrigation contractor to get temporary irrigation installed so the fields can be adequately watered during construction. The other thing I noticed is they've already started on the uh, road putting in the, um, what do you call them, the guardrails. Correct. So they didn't take long to move out on those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I will have more photos uh, for all of you ne in uh, the next meeting coming up. So moving into kind of the agenda that I had handed out to this group and distributed online, I do have uh, one P PCCO for Penichuk. I have a letter of recommendation for the track surfacing contractor at for the McCarthy School. And then uh, Keith Kelly over here next to me, um, who also works at Harvey, 
is going to kind of take us through uh, the GMP contracts for both Maine, Dunstable, and Birch Hill. And then pending approval of those, I'll be presenting the initial subcontractor uh, recommendation to award packages to allow us to get going at the end of this month. So jump into the first uh, prime contract change order for Panachuk Middle School. So again, this change order is comprised of potential change orders that were already previously approved. So all this, all this does is uh, basically form, uh, finalize and formalize um, the previously approved changes. So this PCCO number 13 um, is for a total um, credit value of $614,468.24. And that is comprised of the credit for the Harvey pre-construction fee and the 2020 security upgrades that were performed at Panachuk. Uh, Mr. Smith and I eloquently explained that process to everybody during the last meeting. Um, this also takes care of the um, freezer pad and dumpster pad at the rear of the school and then the, the site cleanup that I mentioned that will be taking place in a few weeks. So again, uh, if approved, this PCO number, PCCO number 13 will be a proof for a total credit value of $614,000. $468.24. So does, if you include the fee credit, doesn't that come out to six ninety nine two ninety thirty nine? No, it's the, it, you have to, it's the credit included with the ads. Okay. So, and because this, uh, okay, so I will need a motion to, Approve PCCO number 13 in the amount of 614,000, a credit of $614,468.24. So moved. So moved by Alderman Timmons. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Moving over to the Brian S. McCarthy Middle School uh, recommendation for award for the track surfacing. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with this process, I uh, basically we go out to bid using the specifications provided by Harriman. Uh, we make sure that all the numbers are apples to apples and that each bidder is bidding on the same, um, the same scope of work. And then we basically, Harvey, we kind of vet both of the however many um, bidders there are, and we recommend the, the most um, qualified contractor. So in, the, in this case, this is for the, uh, the track surfacing at the new school. Um, there is, so the, the specif specification was for a 3 8, three eight inch uh, plexi track lighting, lightning system. So it's eight lane running track, includes all the line striping for the long and triple jump runways and the high jump area. And the base contract recommendation is for $155,000. There is an alternate for this to upgrade to a half inch instead of a three inch. Uh, that this was a recommendation uh, by the track um, contractor that's being recommended. And uh, I also would stand behind this alternate. So if approved, um, the total contract value of this package would be $183,500 in zero cents. And um, that would be, that, that is under the GMP price that was carried in the budget. So uh, there is a savings here. So I do recommend upgrading to the half inch. So if approved, um, we are recommending uh, the track surfacing package to Cape and Island Tennis and Track of Pocasset, Mass for a total value of $183,500.00. So I'll need a motion to approve the track surfacing to Cape and Island Tennis and Track of Pocasset, Mass, in the amount of, including the al alternative one, which Mr. Smith and I also agree with, at $183,500. Someone would like to make that motion? I will. I'm so moved. Are there any questions? Oh, oh yes, Ms. Bishop. Just because we, we were just talking about the high school track, is this going to be a, all of the specifications there if we wanted to host state meets at the middle school? Because I know that was something that we talked about with the high school, that we couldn't host the championship mm -hmm. meets because the track wasn't 
something or other? Do you know, somebody has to know what I'm babbling about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, fortunately we can now host future meets at the South High School because that track is up to snuff. Um, we could probably hold meets at the middle school level because this particular track will not have a pole vault, for example, um, long jump, I don't recall if we have that. But there's some events that occur at the high school level mm -hmm. that don't occur at middle school. But statewide middle school events could be held there. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure we weren't keeping ourselves out of um, the ability to be competitive with other middle school areas. I mean, if we were inundated with lots of teams coming in, they could do the running events right. at the middle school track because that's a standard 440 meter track. So okay. this will be great because today I was at fairgrounds and they had not only the fairgrounds kids, they had for three or four sports, they had all the Elm Street as well. And it, just an amazing amount of people and even more parents when they're picking them all up. So no, this, this will be good. So we have the motion. Is there any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Keith now. Good evening. My name is Keith Kelly. I'm here on behalf of Harvey Construction to present the GMPs for both Birch Elementary Schools and Maine Dunstable. We've combined them. They're, they're two separate projects, but they're combined as a total as it relates to the total project budget uh, put on uh, by National School District. So I'll uh, first go through Birch Hill uh, as Jamie and kind of already described the scope of the project. Uh, we did mention a couple of the alternates uh, that were referenced, uh, both in the base bid documents that are referenced up there as alternate two, three, and four uh, for Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable. Um, alternate number one was en ended up not being used and uh, reflected in this exercise. And alternate number five was referred to as the deferred scopes uh, of work, which were done as a means to get us to this 40, 14, 216, 390 number as a total between the two projects. And just to summarize what some of those items were relative to alter, alternate number five as deferred, quote, deferred scopes. Um, those were things, as Jamie had indicated, uh, reuse of the cubbies and the lockers. Um, there were uh, landscaping and irrigation was carried in one of our in our previous uh, estimates to date. So those were taken out because there is no landscaping and irrigation as part of the scope of work. Um, doors and windows, storefronts, there were some stair uh, um, sections of windows at the stairways that could easily be uh, removed or deferred for later. Refinishing of the, uh, the floor, the gym floor, uh, is something that can be done at a later date and, and frankly don't, doesn't want to be done until we're all done with the project and get rid of the temporary classrooms that are going to be built in the gym. Um, there was repainting of the uh, uh, lockers uh, and cubbies that was deferred until later. Um, but as, as previously mentioned, the lockers and cubbies being reused, so rather than buying new. Uh, folding partition was removed for later use, uh, and the gym wall pads and divider curtain were also deferred until later because those are all scopes that can be um, deferred and, and uh, installed at a time that doesn't have an impact on, on the uh, project schedule, overall project schedule. So for Birch Hill, we have a total uh, GMP value of 7164500 dollars and we'd be looking for uh, that to be accepted uh, as part of this presentation. So the, some of these items that are deferred, um, some of the smaller ones, we're pretty sure that we'll have the money to do them, and others it will depend on, on potentially other funding. But right now, I need a motion to approve the GMP for Birch Hill in the amount of seven million one hundred sixty-four thousand. $516. Now that is the construction manager's GMP. That does not include the ESSER funds. The ESSER funds are separate. We have 13 million for both schools. So this is just the Harvey's contract. Sometimes it gets confusing. So, Make that motion. so Alden Wilshire made the motion. Are there any questions? 
Did you say we have 13 million for each school for ESSER funds or 13 million for both schools? Both schools. Okay. If, if I may, it's actually 17. I'm sorry, 17. 17. 17 million total. That's right, we added some to it. 17. Okay. And uh, it's two buckets, two contractors, so, uh, and they're for different things. But this is Harvey's GMP, and the motion is to approve the GMP for Birch Hill in the amount of $7,164,516. Any further discussion? See none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, and um, in addition to that project is now the main Dunstable Elementary uh, project for a value of 7,051,874. Uh, one might say, why are they different? Because they're essentially the same schools, but uh, there are different areas of uh, impact for finishes, abatement, uh, demolition, things like that. So they're, and the square footages are slightly different between the two schools. So yes, they're the same and mirrored, but they're not everything is really the same. So uh, there's a little bit different in value. Uh, again, the alternates were carried as they were. Again, those alternates are not included in these numbers. They can be added at any time. Uh, and the deferred scopes are the same for Maine Dustville as I went through uh, on Birch Hill, uh, which would give us uh, the total of $7,051,874 for this GMP value. So again, we're proving the GMPs, which is the money for Harvey Construction to do their work. You know, if you remember, we have a 20 million bond, but this does not cover the soft costs and, and the contingencies that we carry. So uh, this is their bid to do the work as indicated. Um, if we things go along smoothly, we have contingency money, some of these th other things will be done. So the GMP, I need a motion to approve the GMP for Maine Dunstable, the $7,051,874. So moved. Gilio made the motion. Are there any questions, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, now that that is done, <laughs> <laughs> I get to talk again. Okay, so now, now that the GMPs have been approved for both schools, now I, I can do the rec letters of recommendation for the key contractors that we've identified um, that we really need on site right away. And then uh, in two weeks, we'll have a whole other collection of subcontractors to, to get us going out uh, on site there. So I will start at uh, Birch Hill Elementary, and we'll start with the demo and abatement contract. Um, we solicited to many bidders, but we received two qualified bids. Um, we are recommending the lowest and qualified bidder. Uh, the scope of work includes all the selective demolition identified uh, on the Harriman documents and also includes any of the abatement that was discovered during the hazmat survey that was performed um, on the school as well. So uh, for this particular scope of work, we are recommending PBC Environmental of Kittery, Maine for a total contract value of $344,720 in zero cents. So I'll need a motion to approve the work for demolition and abatement to PBC, <laughs> PBC Environmental of Kittery, Maine in the amount of $344,720. So move. So moved by Alderman Timmons. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And again, if anyone has any questions on regarding the scope and what what is being performed, just, just raise your hand and I'll do my best to answer the question. Okay. So moving on to the, uh, the metals and structural steel uh, portion. So this is to infill the existing deck openings, which is um, kind of to support the, the new mechanical equipment that's gonna be going on the roof and any uh, miscellaneous uh, reinforcing steel that needs to be added throughout the project. Uh, so that includes all framing of the new deck openings, uh, the new front entry canopy uh, of, for, for the school that Jamie showed in his, uh, in his slides earlier. 
all the miscellaneous metals, any fire watch that is re uh, required by the fire department uh, while we're welding, that is covered in this. Um, this includes all the PE um, engineering st uh, sh stamped shoring and shop drawings for the project and all the shoring and installation that's required while we perform the work uh, safely. So we re received three bids for this scope of work and we're recommending the lowest qualified bidder and that is Empire Sheet Metal of Manchester, New Hampshire for a total contract value of $208,180.00. So I'll need a motion for the Birchill School for, em for metals to Empire Sheet Metal Inc. of Manchester, New Hampshire in the amount of $208,180. Uh, so moved. Okay, so moved by um, Lampier. <laughs> Lampier. And uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next package is the roofing package. So it's pretty uh, self-explanatory, but it includes all the patching of the existing roof penetrations as they're being made, and then any um, you know any repairs that that we discover while we're on site will be taken care of as part of the base contract. So it includes all the flashing of the the new roof penetrations and all the curbs for all of the new equipment that's going to be installed by EEI. So again. They handle all of the mechanical, electrical, plumbing work, and we kind of are doing the more of the, the, the structure and architectural items for this project. Uh, it includes the roofing for the entry canopy, uh, all of the walkway pads and blocking plywood required to install the roof, and all of the perimeter edge metal that you see typically on all of the schools that, that we've completed in the city. Uh, we received two bids. We're recommending the lowest qualified bidder, and that is Academy Roofing of Ringe, New Hampshire, for a total contract value of $124,000.00. So I'll need a motion to recommend for the roofing contract to Academy Roofing Corp. of Ringe, New Hampshire, in the amount of $124,000. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Gilio. Any questions? No. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next package is the glass and glazing package. So the scope of work um, herein is the installation and furnish of all the aluminum storefronts, all the, the new windows. We're going to be retrofitting and modifying uh, some existing window assemblies as well. So it includes all of the, the sealants and backer rod that's required to fill voids as we perform our work. Um, it includes all of the glass and glazing at the interior doors and uh, hollow metal frames as well, like all the side lights. It also includes all the hardware, power supplies, uh, and door operators required for the, to complete the scope of work. So for this, um, for this package, we received two bids, and we're recommending the most qualified bidder, and that is Portland Glass of Lee, New Hampshire for a total contract value of $514,165.00. We'll need a motion to approve the work for aluminum glass and glazing to Portland Glass of Lee, New Hampshire in the amount of $514,165. So moved by Alderman Wilshire. Any questions? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just wondering if we've used, if we're using Portland glass at the new middle school or? Yes, we are. At, at the McCarthy School, we are. So you've had good luck working with them? Mm -hmm. Great. All set. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next package is for the portable transportation of the portable classrooms that are coming from Elm Street. So this includes uh, the transportation from Elm Street to Birch Hill, and then also includes the dismantling at Birch Hill to wherever their final resting place is going to be. <laughs> um, it also, this number also includes a crane to set the portable classroom trailers and any anchoring or bracing that's required you know, per, per Harriman's documents to make sure that they're secure and, and safe for occupancy. So we did receive uh, one bid for this, um, kind of the, the highest recommended, um, highly recommended subcontractor for this particular scope of work um, is JR Transport 
of Tewksbury, Mass. And this is for a total contract value of $97,010.50. I'll need a motion to approve the work for Birch Hill in portable transportation to JR Transport of Tewksbury, Mass. in the amount of $97,010.50. So This is Lampier. Okay. That was Miss Timmons. <laughs> well, what? it doesn't really oh. matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alderman Timmons. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I don't see um, I don't see uh, one here for um, for Maine Dunstable, just Birch Hill. Oh, we, we get a, we do there's another no other set for Maine Dunstable. We don't Birch Hill. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Sorry. We'll get there. She tied. All set. Okay. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, th thank you. The final package for Birch Hill, and then we'll get into me, <laughs> is the site work package. So the, the site work is very limited on uh, for, for this project. It's uh, really just to get set up for the uh, portable classrooms. Uh, there's some utility work associated with that and just making sure that um, the subgrade is, um, is, is safe and ready for the portable classrooms. And then it also includes kind of restoring the site back to normal when we complete the project in 2025. Um, it includes any um, any asphalt and gravels, any tree cutting, um, so and um, any foundation and excavation and backfill work for the new uh, front entry that'll be taking place in summer of 24. So uh, pretty limited and small site work package for this, but. Um, we did receive uh, three bids, and we're recommending the lowest qualified bidder, and that is CSSI Contractors of Bedford, New Hampshire, for a total contract value of $270,630.00. And I'll need a motion to approve the site work for Birch Hill Elementary School for to CSSI Contractors of Bedford, New Hampshire, in the amount of $270,630.00. So moved. Julio, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. So moving over to Maine Dunstable. So you'll notice a lot of the, the scopes are pretty much the same mm -hmm. um, as, as Keith mentioned, but you know, with a few minor tweaks here and there. So due to that, we have carried a lot of the same contractors, but there are some cases where we might have to recommend a different contractor just based on workload on other Harvey projects or just commitments that the con contractor that might be working at one school might not be able to service the, the, the other school the same. So it, we kind of have to be strategic on, on um, how we award these, but most of them are the same contractors, which is helpful for everyone involved. So moving into main Dunstable for the demolition and abatement. So again, the same, same scope of work, uh, recommending uh, PBC Environmental of Kittery, Maine for a total contract value of $403,951.00. Okay, I'll need a motion to recommend for the main Dunstable Elementary School in the work in demolition and abatement to PC PBC Environmental of Kittery, Maine, in the amount of $403,951. So, so moved by Alderman Wilshire. Any questions? I, I just have a quick question. Sure. In regards to the abatement, I, for both Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable, <clears throat> um, are we looking at lead and asbestos? Is that is that what we're... It's mainly asbestos in select areas of the flooring. Mm -hmm. uh, much of the school's flooring has already been replaced, mm -hmm. so it's pretty limited. Um, all the abatement will be done similar to Franklin Street over vacations or summer vacations mm -hmm. when the school is unoccupied. Uh, there's, you know, there's some glue dobs, but it's very limited. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of lucked out. Okay. Just wonder because I remember being at Elm Street when they did Dr. Crisp. Does anybody remember this? And all of the Dr. Crisp elementary students had to come to Elm Street mm. because they couldn't have any students in there, and it was just a lead and asbestos amusement park over there. <laughs> so <laughs> we were happy to host the elementary school kids. We were on our best behavior for a couple of years, but <laughs> I'd hate to have that happen again. Displace all those students. Okay, I was just checking. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? 
Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next package, again, is the structural steel and metals. Um, again, we are recommending Empire Sheet Metal Incorporated of Manchester, New Hampshire, for a total contract value of $208,180.00. Okay, I'll need a letter of rec um, a motion to approve at Maine Dunstall Elementary School for the award of metals work to Empire Sheet Metal Inc. of Manchester, New Hampshire, in the amount of $208,180. So moved. So moved by Mr. Giglio. Any questions, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving into the next package, which is roofing. Again, same, same scope as over at Birch Hill. I'm recommending Academy Roofing of Ringe, New Hampshire for a total contract value of $121,200.00. Okay, I'll need a motion to approve the work for roofing at Maine Dunstall Elementary School, awarded to Academy Roofing Corp of Ringe, New Hampshire, in the amount of $121,200. So moved by Ms. <laughs> Alderman Wilshire. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving into the aluminum glass and glazing package. Uh, this is the same scope as uh, Birch Hill, but there is one difference, and that's at the quiet rooms. It's just a different type of glazing in the, in the quiet room area. Um, again, uh, recommending Portland Glass of Lee, New Hampshire for this scope of work for a total contract value of $522,865.00. All right, I'll need a motion to award the aluminum glass and glazing for Maine Dunstable Elementary School to Portland Glass of Lee, New Hampshire in the amount of $522,865.00. So moved. So moved by Alderman Timmons. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next package is for the portable portables transportation for Maine Dunstable. So again, this is for the transportation from Elm Street to Birch Hill, uh, to Maine Dunstable and then Maine Dunstable to the final resting place. Uh, again, this is JR Transport for of Tewksbury, Mass for a ton Total contract value of $98,186.50. All right, need a motion to approve the portables transportation from Maine Dunstable Elementary School to J.I. Transport of Tewksbury, Mass. In the amount of $98,186.50. So moved. Julio, made the motion. Any questions, concerns? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The final package for this evening is the site work package for Maine Dunstable. We are recommending CSI, CSSI contractors of Bedford, New Hampshire for a contract value of $227,090.00. I'll need a motion to approve the site work at Maine Dunstable Elementary School to CSSI contractors of Bedford, New Hampshire in the amount of $227,090. So moved by Alderman Wilshire. Any questions, concerns? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. That's it for me, thank you folks. <laughs> okay, I believe we're at the time for paying some bills. Smith. Actually, we have three other items to address. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Purchases. Uh, the first one is for dispensers from McCarthy Middle School. This is for toilet paper, soap, paper towel dispensers, sanitary napkin disposal containers. Uh, we worked with Harvey, divided, decided where we needed everything. Um, and uh, basically, it was every room, every restroom and every other place in a school that has sinks, for example, family consumer science, uh, science classrooms, kitchens. Um, 
provided the totals on a spreadsheet that was attached. We our preferred vendor for this is Cleanorama of Gorm, Maine. And the total for everything we need comes to seventeen thousand nine hundred and fifty-three dollars and four cents. Incidentally, the soap dispensers are free. So there's no expense for that. So I recommend we approve that. And then na the name of the company and the amount again? Clean O Rama. <laughs> Uh, the amount was seventeen thousand nine hundred fifty-three dollars and four cents. Four cents. I need a motion to recommend to purchase disp dispenses for Brian S. McCarthy Middle School in the amount to clean Orama in the amount of seventeen thousand nine hundred fifty-three dollars and four cents. So moved. <laughs> Alderman Timmons made the motion. Any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next item is to run fiber and cable to uh, McCarthy Middle School from uh, various destinations in the city. The um, IT department went out and solicited bids, received two. Um, one of the bids was actually incomplete um, and had some follow on costs. So the, um, this provides fiber from uh, the South High School to McCarthy Middle School, so it's, it's RIT. It also provides the labor to run the uh, cable for the fire department. So that run, I'm not sure where that runs from, but it ends up at McCarthy Middle School. So the uh, IT recommends we award the contract to ComTrac, that's C-O-M-M, hyphen tract with a T, an amount of $208,272. Incidentally, by doing this and waiting until this point, uh, we got, took advantage of the uh, E-rate funds, so it saved nearly 60% of potential cost. Can you say the number again? It was 208272. Uh, yeah, we, we definitely... We're going to wait to save 60%, believe me. So I need a motion to approve the fiber optic and cable connections to the McCarthy Middle School to ComTrack at the amount of $208,272. So moved. Ms. Julio, okay. Any questions? No. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On. Uh, let's see. Just updating my notes. Next item is the award of a uh, contract or the work for the security vegetable project. We issued an RFP uh, it was on the city website and received just one bid for the work. Fortunately, it's a <laughs> company that we're well acquainted with, and that would be Harvey Construction. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we put the information out there, request bids. If other companies don't want to bid, then that's their choice. It, it's a tough time to get out this sort of document just because usually most companies are already set up for the summer. In fact, we've had early discussions about this, and the work may actually take place summer 24, because mm -hmm. even Harvey is kind of behind the eight ball as far as getting things done this summer. So, um, that's acceptable to us. Uh, we're working with the architect to final design. Um, one of the three schools is a subject of discussion in Board of Ed meetings and, and the media. Uh, so we may not need to, uh, may or may not need to do this there. Either way, we'll be prepared to do it. Uh, the design is pretty much finalized. So the recommendation is to hire Harvey Construction as the construction manager for the Elementary school security renovations. No, oh, no. They they they, they list. It's a secret. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's a secret. secret. Yes. It's, it's. No, they provided a list of their fees, uh, costs of uh, various people in the organization, which are entirely consistent with the uh, past work they've done with us. 
once we pass a contract to hire a construction manager, now they'll go out and do the pricing and give us a price when they come back. It's just okay. they'll be the GMP for GMP for the security of estimates. All right, so I need a motion to approve for the for the three security vestibules left to be done to Harvey Construction. So moved. Oh. I'm going to quiet down for the rest of the night. <laughs> All right, so who got that one? Yeah, man. Oh, I, I, she was next to me, so I heard All that. right. <laughs> okay. So... The motion on the floor is to award the security vestibules to Ivy Construction. Uh, any questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Sean? Okay, next are invoices. <clears throat> so the first one I'll, I'll describe a little bit first. Uh, these are actually invoices, if you looked at them, that date back to last June. Uh, the, um, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Forget that. I'll come back to that one. Uh, th these are invoices from Allied for security work at Franklin Street. There were five invoices totaling $24,228. Um, EEI and Energy Efficient Inc. Uh, provided some invoices for Birch Hill and Maine Dunstable for the preliminary work and design totaling $253,000. $995.66. We received uh, five invoices from Harriman for work at McCarthy Middle School, Penetrack Middle School, Franklin Street, Birch Hill, and Main D. Those total $111,982.16. Three invoices from uh, Harvey for work at Brian McCarthy, Penetrack, and Franklin Street, totaling $3,596,000. $862.19. One invoice from Hainer Swanson. Uh, they're our surveying company for work at Brian S. McCarthy Middle School. And she didn't write down the total. Oh, I see it. $585.48. Um, Hertz Furniture. They were formerly school furnishings. They provided the furniture for Penichuk Middle School. One invoice in the amount of $54,000. $654.09. We have, <clears throat> get them all right here. This is the one I, met, I was talking about earlier. So we received all these invoices uh, a week ago. They asked why they weren't being paid. They go back to last June. So after doing some research and checking whether our account's payable, they somehow, even though they are the same contractor that did all the other schools, they had my email wrong and the accounts payable's email wrong. Something changed in transition. So we, we've, we looked at it and we do in fact owe them the money. Uh, it was just uh, their error and not sending it to the right people. So there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven invoices totaling uh, $17,459. Turner Building Science, um, they're a commissioning agent for work at Penichuk and McCarthy, totaling $10,229.10. Turner Group, which is HL Turner Group, uh, for design work for the security vegetable project, $45,870. And finally, uh, two invoices from RPF Environmental, they do our asbestos abatement and monitoring. Uh, six thousand and forty two dollars all those add up to the following by school franklin street two hundred thousand three hundred forty dollars and twenty three cents for the middle school project three million five hundred fifty four thousand four hundred ninety one dollars and fifty eight cents for the birch hill main dunstable project three hundred twenty one thousand two hundred five dollars and eighty seven cents Finally, the security vegetable project, $45,870. All those come to a grand total of $4,121,907.68. So I'll need a motion to approve the invoices for Franklin Street in the amount of $200,340.23, the middle school project invoices, 
$3,554,491.58. For Chilmaine Dunstable invoices, the amount of $321,205.87. Security Vestibule Project invoices, the amount of $45,870. For total invoices to be paid, $4,000,000. $121,907.68. I'll move. make that. <laughs> Ms. Bishop made the I'll motion. I'll make that motion. Made the motion to approve. I can do something tonight. Any questions? <laughs> Seeing no questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Anything else, Sean? Or are you all set? Did you want to discuss your upcoming vote on the 11th for the middle school project or additional funds? No. <laughs> for real, first, I didn't know what you were talking about. The, uh, as, you, as you know, we, we put in for the additional $10 million required for the middle school project. Um, and, well, I know everybody got a copy of the letter that explained it in detail, but... It, it was always part of the payment for the original GMP. And once we had the GMP for the Harvey Middle School, we were trying to see if we could save some money and wouldn't have to go in for the full 10 million, but with the anticipated work for the, for the uh, dehumidification in Penachuk, we feel we need that. Uh, we also feel that we will have money left over even though we're going for 10 million, but we need that for contingency. And uh, so it's been approved unanimously by the budget committee at the Board of Aldermen, and it's on the agenda for our next meeting on the 11th. And once that's approved, the scope of the project will increase to the 130 million, 330,000. Questions? There seem to be some confusion. My certain people in the public on that particular subject, but we've straightened them up. Okay, comments by committee members? Nope. Oh. We don't need a non-public, what? Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, on, on that or in general? general. <laughs> Sorry. The, the light situation at Panachuk. <laughs> Can we? get a promise that it won't be running in the summer when schools close. Which light? The Penichuk, the new lights at Penichuk. I, I don't understand why they would be ever on anything but flashing red and yellow. Are you talking about the street lights? Yes, on Manchester Street. No longer, oh, okay. no longer What? Traffic lights. Traffic lights. Traffic lights. Yeah, no longer under our control. It's under the control of the DPW and the State Department of Transportation. And once they get put in place, it's up to them. I don't think they're going to turn them off because then people get used to them being one way or the other and tend to avoid following what they're saying. Now, having said that, there are two things that we're looking at. One is to, they, they have go, going to wait till the spring, which is pretty close to now, to look at the timing of the lights. Uh, they've been collecting data to see if they need to change the timing of the lights. Uh, and then it, it, it's, it's looking like we should put some asphalt, uh, sort of a lane, holding lane for the cars because when kids get picked up, they block the road. So uh, I think we're going to give the cars a place to pull over so the traffic lanes can still flow. So, uh, but that light doesn't belong to us anymore. We paid to acquire it, get it in place, but anytime it's on a, a, a street, it belongs to the DPW, and in this case, because it's so close to Henry Burke, the Department of Transportation is involved in the timing of the lights and, the, and how they operate. Sorry. I don't you, cry. I know you live in that neighborhood. <laughs> you don't like to stop. But I, yeah, like, don't cry. <laughs> but I, I will say that uh, we could never hire anybody crazy enough to stand in the middle of that and direct traffic. 
Alderman Klee tried it one time and almost <laughs> got killed. So uh, it, it has some tweaks that need to be done, and it will be done. By the way, the uh, electronic sign at Penichuk is up and running. Uh -huh. yeah. And providing information that. to parents, like move up. But, uh, anyway, so yeah, that's, that's out of our control. Just like anything inside the school is in your control. It's called progress. We, we just build the schools, we don't run them. Sorry, speaking of which, the opening ceremony, the date for Penichuk, okay. Don't have it yet. I have it yet. Have to talk to Gabe, principal. You do believe it's gonna be before June, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Ken, do you have any idea when they're moving the plaques and stuff? I believe the plaques have already been moved, but we're holding on installing the new one until we have the ceremony, so. Last time with, I was in, they had to move. I have to check with. A week ago? I have to check with Mike, but. Yeah. All right, and you have the, what? <laughs> I thought you were pointing to Mike's right hand man. So, okay, uh, I think that's it. Do I have a motion to adjourn? No move. Alderman Wilshire made the motion to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned at 826. Not bad.